readings from divine writings. Liao Fan's Four Lessons. Original work by Liao Fan of the Ming Dynasty, China. Recited by Aburime Christopher. The first lesson, learning to create destiny. Creating destiny is about forming one's fate rather than being bound by it. The lesson of learning to create destiny discusses the principle behind fate and the knowledge necessary to change it. By relating his own experiences and trials at changing destiny, Mr. Liang Fan Yuan taught his son Tian Chi not to be bound by fate, but rather to put forth his best effort in practicing kindness and eradicating wrongdoing. One should not reject doing a kind act simply because it seems to be a minute goodness or commit a bad deed simply because it appears to be a small wrongdoing. If one practices in a proper manner, it is assured that one's destiny can be changed. It is often said refraining from all wrongdoing and practicing all forms of kindness brings about the reduction of disasters and the coming of good fortune. This is the principle behind creating one's destiny. Liao Fan, my father passed away when I was young and mother persuaded me to learn medicine instead of becoming a scholar. Mother, learning medicine will be a good way to support yourself and to help others besides having a skill you will never have to worry about making a living and you can even become famous through your medical skills. This was always your father's wish for you. Liao Fan, one day at the Compassionate Cloud Temple, I met an elderly but distinguished looking man with a long beard. He had such a look of a sage that I immediately paid my respects to him. The old man told me, old man, you are destined to become a government official. You can attain the rank of erudite first level scholar next year. Why aren't you studying for the exam? Leofan. So I told him of my mother's instructions to give up scholarly study for learning medicine. Then I asked for his name, birthplace, and residence. He replied, Old man, my last name is Kung. I came from Yunnan province. I have inherited the knowledge of Mr. Shao who developed the art of prediction very well. By calculations, I'm supposed to pass it on to you. Liao Fan, I led Mr. Kung to my home and told my mother about him. Mother told me to treat him very well and said, Mother, since Mr. Kung is so good at predicting the future, he must also know our past. Let's ask him and test his authenticity. Liao Fan, consequently, I found Mr. Kung's calculations to be very accurate, even in very small cases. After hearing his words of advice, I again thought about studying. 
I then consulted my cousin, Shen Chen. He recommended, cousin, my friend, Mr. Haigu Yu is teaching at the home of Yo Fu Shang. It will be very convenient for me to take you there for boarding and studying. Liao Fan, this was how I became Mr. Yu's student. Once again, Mr. Kong made a prediction for me. Mr. Kong, as a student, you will place 14th in the county examination, 71st in the regional examination, and 9th in the provincial examination. Yao Fan, the following year, at the three places of examination, I placed exactly as he had predicted. Then Mr. Kong calculated the predictions for my entire life. Mr. Kong, you will pass such and such a test in such and such a year. You will become a civil servant in such a year. And in such a year, you will receive a promotion. Finally, you will be appointed as a magistrate in Sichuan province. After holding that office for three and a half years, you will resign and return home. At the age of 53, you will die around one o'clock in the morning on August 14th. It is a pity that you will not have a son. Liao Fan, I recorded and remembered all that he said. From then on, the outcome of every examination I took turned out exactly as Mr. Kong had predicted. Mr. Kong also predicted that I would be promoted only after receiving a salary in the weight of 91 dance and five doughs of rice. However, I had received only 71 dance of rice when the senior educational official, Mr. Tu, recommended me for a promotion. I secretly began to doubt Mr. Kong's predictions. Liao Fan, nevertheless, the prediction turned out to be correct after all because the recommendation was turned down by Mr. Tu's superior, Mr. Yang. It was not until several years later when Mr. Chiu Mingying saw my old examination papers and exclaimed, Mr. Ying, these five essays are as well written as reports to the emperor. How can we bury the talents of such a great scholar? Liao Fan, Mr. Ying wanted the magistrate to issue an official order for me to become a candidate for imperial student under his authority. After undergoing this eventful promotion, my calculation showed that I had received exactly 91 dance and five doses of rice. From then on, whether it was promotion, rank, or wealth, I deeply believed that all came about in due time and that the length of one's life is predestined. I began to view everything in a more detached manner and ceased to seek gain and profit. After being selected as an imperial student, I was to attend the university at Beijing. During my year-long stay at the capital, my interest in meditation grew and I often sat silently without giving rise to a single thought. I lost interest in books and did not study at all. Before I was to enter the National University at Nanjing, I paid a visit to the enlightened Zen master Yunggu at Chishia Mountain. We sat face to face in the Zen hall for three days and nights without ever falling asleep. Master Yunggu questioned me saying, Master Yunggu, the reason why ordinary people are unable to attain sagehood is because they have too many wandering and false thoughts running through their minds. In our three-day meditation, I have not observed the slightest wandering thought arise in you. Why is this so? Liao Fan, I replied, Mr. Kong has clearly predicted the entire outcome of my life. I have seen that 
the time of life, death, promotion, and failure are predestined. There is no use or need for me to think about it or to desire anything. That is why you have not seen me give rise to a single wandering thought. Master Yungo laughed. Master Yungo, I thought you were someone of remarkable capabilities. Now I realize you are nothing but an average, ordinary person. Liao Fan, feeling confused by what he said, I asked the master to explain. Master Yungu, an average person's mind is forever occupied by wandering and imaginary thoughts. So, naturally, their life is bound by the chi of yin and yang as well as fate. We cannot deny the fact that fate exists, but only ordinary people are bound by it. Fate cannot bind those who cultivate great kindness. 